Hi, my name is James Earl, and today we're going to be talking about the integer knapsack problem, also known as the 0-1 knapsack problem. This problem is known to be NP-complete, but through use of dynamic programming, we can come up with a solution that works in pseudo-polynomial time. So let's dive in. Hey everybody, so welcome to part two of the knapsack problem videos. In part one, we discussed the fractional knapsack problem, and now we're going to discuss the integer knapsack problem. So we're going to talk about why we can't use a greedy algorithm like we could with the fractional problem, and we're going to discuss some possibilities as to what we can do about that. So go over how we can actually work around being unable to use a greedy algorithm. So first, let's consider an example. We've got these four items here, each with their own respective weights and values. And we have a backpack with a maximum value of 13. So the greedy approach that we discussed in the fractional video takes the highest value to weight ratio first. Now, if we look at these specific values, this is going to take item 4 first because it's got the highest weight value to weight ratio over all of these other items. And then it's going to take item 1. So you can see that this is going to give you an okay value, but it's actually not optimal. So items three and four is actually going to give you a better solution, and it still fits inside this backpack. The difference is that we can only take a single um, portion of an item. So we can only take it or not take it. Meanwhile, in the fractional problem, we were actually take, able to take, say, half of an item and take its proportional amount of value with it. In this case, we can only take or not take an item and as a result, this greedy approach isn't really going to behave the way we want it to. So that leaves us with the pretty obvious question of how can we optimize? Well, as we've discussed before, you can always try all of the possibilities. You can brute force it, but we know that this is an exponential problem. It's going to be big O of 2 to the n if you try to brute force this. And sure, it might work with you know a few items, but if you're really considering any large number of items, then this is actually going to become quite problematic. So what we do then is consider dynamic programming. As always with dynamic programming, the first thing we need to do is prove optimal substructure. Fortunately, this is actually pretty easy. So you can just consider the most valuable set of items S with weight maximally M. So what this means is consider the set or subset of items S that have the highest value that you can possibly take and fit inside your backpack. Let's say the backpack's max capacity was M. These S items will weigh at most M. They don't necessarily fill the backpack, but they can weigh at most M. So if you remove some arbitrary item K from this set of items that is considered optimal, what's going to happen is the rest of S, so S without that Kth item, is going to be the most valuable set of items weighing at most M minus wk from the n minus 1 original items that actually exclude k. So what this means is that the solution to s is actually built on the solution to s minus this kth item. So the substructure then actually exists. And that's actually it. Now we're done. So now that we've proven optimal substructure, we can consider the recurrence. So to build a recurrence, let's define C at i and m to be the value of the solution for items 1 to i with the maximum weight m. So there's going to be a few cases to consider, but the first two are actually fairly trivial. So of course, if we're not considering any items as i equals 0, or the maximum weight equals 0, so m equals 0, then of course the value that we're going to be able to achieve has to be 0. Next, we can consider the weight of an item exceeding the maximum weight m. In this case, you're going to take the adjacent items in the table as optimal. So what this really means is you're going to take its subproblem because you'll see in the way we uh, actually build the table, the i minus 1th item is going to be the subsolution not considering the ith item. And this kind of makes sense because if the ith item's weight is larger than the maximum capacity, of course it's not going to be part of an optimal solution or any solution. Now the third case is the interesting one. So what you're actually considering is these two sort of subcases in this problem. So the first, of course, says that the value of the ith item, v of i, plus the 
value of the i minus oneth solution and the m minus wi solution. So this is the case where you actually take the ith item into your backpack. So the i minus oneth will then take you to the set of i minus one items, so the one, two, i minus one. Now we're not considering the ith item anymore. And the m minus wi will take you across the table to a point where you only have m minus wi space left in your backpack. So this kind of seems to make sense. If we take it, we're going to add the value and remove that amount of weight. Of course, the alternate option in this maximum statement we've got here is that we don't take it. So this is actually going to be the same as the second case, because if we don't take it, we just take its subproblem as an optimal value. Of course, this can only occur when i is greater than 0 and w i is less than m, because these are the bounds we've set based on the previous cases. So now let's come back to the example we talked about before. We can actually walk through the recurrence, and I'm going to show you how to build this table. So let's consider the first case in the recurrence. You can see that we've got this row 0 and this column 0 in the top left corner of the table. Obviously then, all of these values will be set to 0. So now let's take a look at space 1,1. One, one. We have one item, the first item, and our maximum weight is 1. Well, of course, the maximum weight is less than the weight of the first item, so it's going to be 0. But you'll actually see that this applies to all of the cases until we're in the fifth column, because that's when the maximum weight is the same as the weight of the item we're considering. So we can go ahead and fill in all zeros. Now the next space here where we're actually able to fit in the item, what we're going to do is say we're going to put it in and it's the only item we can consider because we're considering one item and in this variation of the knapsack problem we're actually not allowing for duplicate items. There are some variations that do but in this case, we're going to say once we've taken an item, we can't take it again. So now we've got a value of 5 because we've taken item number 1 and we've filled up our backpack. So now we're going to consider the rest of this row, but really we're only considering the first item and now there are no more items to be taken. So we can actually just go ahead and fill in the rest of this row with 5s as well. So now let's look at space 2-1. What's going to happen is something very similar to what happened previously. We can't place anything except the subproblems values, so the value above the cell we're considering, until the weight of the problem is the same as the weight of the item we're considering. So the weight of item 2 is 6, so this means the sixth column is when we're going to be able to actually consider what might happen next. So we fill in all these zeros and actually 1, 5 because we're taking the previous solution and now we're trying to consider what's going to happen next. So we take a look and we're going to actually use the third case now. So what is greater? This is the maximum statement. The value at 1 and 6, so the value 5, or the value at column 6 minus the weight of item 2. So the weight of item 2 is 6, so we're going to be brought back to column 0 plus the value of weight the value of item 2, pardon me. So that's going to give us 4 because zero, is, uh, 0 plus 4 is just going to be 4. And 4 is less than 5, so we're going to choose 5. So we're going, to, we're going to not take item number 2. Now we can follow the same process four more times until we're actually going to think here, when we're going across the table, subtracting 6 from the maximum weight, we're actually going to hit this very first 5 at space 1, 5. Now, now it's going to be a different case because instead of taking the value above the cell we're considering, we're actually going to take the addition of the value from the previous item and this item. And that's going to give us 9. So we're going to be able to fill in those 9s throughout the rest of the table, or for the rest of this row, and we can see that this is the best considering the first two items. So you can kind of see the pattern that's going to happen is we're going to base our decision on the item we're considering, so in this case it was the second item, on what we decided for the previous item, the first item. And this sort of snowballs until we've made our decision regarding all of them. So I'm actually just going to fill in the rest of the table. And if there's any questions, just leave them in the comments. But for now, you can just go ahead and pause and take a look at what we've done. Okay. 
So now from here, we can actually build our solution. So what we're trying to do is find which values or which items we should take to achieve this optimal value. You can see the, the highest value we can achieve given these four items is a value of 14. Now you might think it's pretty trivial because items three and four, like we discussed before, will fit and they'll give you a value of 14. There's actually no other combination of items in this specific example that will give you a value of 14, but it might not always be that simple to find out. So we're gonna discuss a process you can use to actually find the composition of the optimal solution. So start in the bottom right corner at value 14. So we're considering the fourth item with a maximum weight of 13. You can see that the value above it is not the same. So if the value above the, the space we're considering is not the same, what this means is that the fourth item is going to be in our solution. So then because it's in our solution, we subtract that amount of weight from the table. We move across down to space nine, and then we're going to do the same thing for item three. If the value above it is the same, then we know it's not a part of the solution, but if it's different, we know it is a part of the solution and we, and we subtract that much weight. So we can see that seven and five, of course, aren't the same. And now we add three into our solution and we're going to subtract the weight of item three across the table. So this gives us eight. And now we're stretched all the way across to the first column, but because the values above this value that we're at now are the same, we know that items two and one are not going to be in our solution. So we can just go right to the top and we're done. So thanks to dynamic programming, we were actually able to solve this in big O of n times n time, where n is the number of items and m is the maximum weight because you need to build a table of that size. And that's it. So this is significantly better than the exponential time of brute forcing this problem. And now we've conquered the dynamic solu programming solution for the integer knapsack problem. So thank you so much, guys, for watching my video. Please check out our other videos on dynamic programming for CS Breakdown. Thanks.